The Nazca Lines are undoubtedly one of Earth's most perplexing ancient relics. Not only are they unimaginably big, but their accuracy still baffles all who try to explain them, even to this day. With many of these ancient drawings seemingly only visible or indeed fully appreciated from great altitude, many people over the centuries have predictably pondered upon the possibility of there having once been ancient flying machines. And although many of these ancient marks could be perceived as possibly past runways or landing sites, there exists one site in particular that possesses some of the most compelling, if little shared, characteristics of them all. Known as El Fuerte, it can be found amongst a pre-Columbian archaeological site in Bolivia. It is believed that for over a thousand years, the site served as a ceremonial center for various pre-Columbian cultures, ultimately becoming the home of the Inca, who turned the site into the east capital of their empire. We have often stated that we strongly believe that at some point within Earth's distant history, a highly advanced intercontinental civilization once flourished, building enormous stone structures. With knowledge and capabilities in stone carving and building, we, the modern man, are yet to unravel. And although the site consists of an average ancient settlement, complete with buildings, architecture, and irrigational ruins, the most intriguing feature of the site, and the purpose for the video, is what was once carved out of the solid rock atop the mountain. Along the crest of the hill is the most intriguing feature of the site, or possibly Nazca itself, known as the El Cascabel, which can be translated as the rattle. It is two parallel lines oriented to the eastern sky with a position of azimuth at 71 degrees and an altitude of about 6.75 degrees. Interestingly, this is the exact orientation of the rise of Pleiades at different times within history. Why was this curious carving etched into the top of this mountainside within Bolivia? Was this ancient site once used as a launching pad? Furthermore, intriguingly, much of the surrounding stone seems to have experienced ancient quarrying. Is this ancient mountain the site of an ancient quarry, once done by a group who had flying Vimanas at their disposal? An incredible sight, which we find highly compelling. From time to time, we will share with you one of the more intriguing exhibits that can be found within the museums of Giza. Beyond the mountainous displays of precious jewels and finely cast golden relics which captivate the crowds who flock to experience this extremely rich history, we personally find the more valuable of objects are often overlooked. Indeed, these precious masks and past pharaoh's possessions are undoubtedly exquisite in nature. However, there are some objects, never designed to stun or impress, but built with a function. Functions which could shed light on the most intriguing and mysterious aspects of this past civilization. The Khufu ship being but one of these said artifacts. A boat found disassembled under the Great Pyramid, once said to have floated through the sky. And although the physical idea of this ship actually flying is a leap too far for some, there is, in fact, an artifact which exists found in 1898 during an excavation of the Padi Ayman tomb in Saqqara, Egypt, which you may find a bit more practically designed for flight through the Egyptian skies. Although numerous sources over the past century have surfaced accusing Egyptian authorities of concealing the discovery of Vimanas, ancient flying machines, within the pyramids of Giza, our said artifact seems to have slipped through this net of secrecy. Often with these well-stocked and well-preserved tombs, resting places of past pharaohs, whom once possessed unimaginable riches, numerous toy models of their once favored crafts and vessels will be discovered, exquisitely constructed miniature replicas of their favorite forms of travel. It seems this artifact may have indeed been filtered through the security netting of public paradigm as doing so, it seems to have lost its tailplane. Known as the Saqqara bird, it is now largely thought by many 
to have been a replica of an ancient flying craft, more specifically a glider. Clearly inspired by a bird's flight, the fixed wing upon its back has been found to be perfectly angled to create lift. Egyptian physician, archaeologist, parapsychologist and dowser Khalil Messia has concluded that the ancient Egyptians developed the first aircrafts. Predictably, he has experienced considerable hostility regarding his expose of evidences. One particular effort was undertaken by a character known as Martin Gregory, a builder and designer of free-flight gliders. He apparently built an exact replica of the Saqqara bird made of balsa wood. After testing this replica, Gregory would conclude that the Saqqara bird never flew. He told the interested parties that it was totally unstable in flight. Even after a tailplane was fitted, he claimed that the glider's performance was disappointing. He finished by concluding that the Saqqara bird was probably made as a child's toy or a weather vane. This clear attempt to suppress the truth, however, failed, and Martin has since been proven to have lied regarding the abilities of the glider. The question is why did he lie? According to Messia's son, Dawood Khalil Messia, a successful architect who has thankfully continued the work of his father, Gregory's suggestion that the Saqqara bird was a weather vane is impossible due to the lack of markings or any holes on the model that would serve as a means of hanging it. Additionally, and most importantly, aerodynamics expert Simon Sanderson also tested a replica model in a wind tunnel without a tailplane and found that it produced four times the glider's own weight and lift. In Liverpool University, Sanderson then subjected it to another, more powerful wind tunnel, this time after adding the missing tail. He stated that the Saqqara bird actually flew quite well, clearly to the annoyance of certain people who are probably now regretting not seizing the entire artifact some years ago, rather than just the tailplane. Over 2,000 years after the ancient Egyptians carved this mysterious bird, modern technology has proven beyond doubt that at full size, it could have indeed once flown through the Egyptian skies. Ancient Uparts A section of ancient history which many find as their preference, it is undeniably one of the strongest areas of argument within the study of antiquities which is in support of the past existence of once highly capable, incredibly technologically advanced, yet now lost ancient civilizations. The ancient astronaut theory being one main topic of interest within the Uparts realm. When it comes to certain current or now past allies, in alliance with our so often reiterated posit of the existence and the volumes of surviving evidence in support of a now lost, often also claimed, now actively hidden, enormous number of chapters of human history. It is thanks to their laborious collaborative efforts which has allowed us to accomplish such a strong and compelling evidence in addition, the realization that much of these sites and anomalous features also display a strong evidential suggestion that many of these civilizations somehow succumbed suddenly, possibly to a past cataclysm. However, if this vast and still growing file of evidence, all suggesting sudden demise, is, in the future, somehow found to have been an undeniable reality, possibly a repeated event, a question arises. Who could these claimed ancient astronauts possibly have been? The evidence suggesting sudden halts in undertaking within countless elaborately created by clearly highly resourced people megalithic quarries which were inexplicably abandoned litter our planet. This may suggest that these uparts are either of returning unfortunate witnesses to this cataclysm, somehow returning many generations later successfully making contact with a civilization raised from the ashes of their now-forgotten world. Somehow surviving all this time in an ancient spacecraft, possibly better, possibly similar to our own modern space stations, absent long enough to be depicted by a people presumably astonished by their existence. Secondly, they could quite possibly depict ancient alien visitors to our planet either once deliberately making contact or once crashing here, forcing these entities to make contact, thus witnessed. Yet, if true, their likeness to Earthlings is a controversial consequence to said history. Or are all somehow 
a mere coincidence. One or two hoaxes, we feel, is a real reality. But for all these magnificent, enigmatic, and often clear depictions of similarly-looking individuals, all being hoaxes? Yet so far separated geographically, we find unlikely. One must keep this in mind when studying such artifacts, such as the Istanbul rocket. The claimed ancient space module, which became one of the most popular artifacts of the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Sought after by Western scientists and media alike, poured over and written about in hundreds of articles across Europe. Even featuring on television programs and within many newspaper articles. However, what is fascinating about this reality, that for many years, many specialists, often talented people, also just as often funded to presumably determine an inaccuracy in the object's claimed age, did not. Not until a few years ago, that is. In the last few years, it has been that the Istanbul rocket was apparently found to have been a hoax. A plaster cast made some 25 years ago. A puzzling claim when one remembers that just five years after, the space module was sought after by German and English, among many other national archaeologists, and was, for a long time, secured in the preservation unit of the museum. Was this really a plaster cast, a mere five years old when this discovery was announced, successfully fooling the world's scientific communities? Or was it like so many other artifacts we study, successfully stolen, then replaced with a clear fake? We will leave that up to you to decide from the evidence available. But an argument for found crash craft can also be seen in the inspiration for the creation of things, like that of the lid of Pakal's tomb. An enigmatic depiction of this same form of technology, again, turns up all over South America, and even further afield. The Kiev spaceman, yet another found far away in the remote, desolate landscapes of Ukraine. Clearly, a depiction of a gas-breathing humanoid-shaped being, depicted with seemingly no injuries, yet the reason for said depiction is an ongoing debate yet due to its clear characteristics, a welcome member of this long list of ancient Uparts. Ancient astronauts? Or merely an extremely elaborate, highly complex, hard-worked, long-lived hoax? We find the evidence to support the theory highly compelling.